just thoughts and prayers out to uh, Andre Miller. That was the young man that was down, and uh, he's going to be at, I want to say, upstate tonight. And, uh, you know, whatever he needs, uh, I'm pretty sure the military is going to be able to give him. But uh, we will do our part in whatever it takes. Questions? We'll start with Mario. Mario, that's right there. Thanks, Coach. Uh, how important was it for the defense in the second half, that, that front of yours, to, to work off those uh, you know, double blocks that Army was doing? You know, it, it was really important. It kind of goes into the, uh, the whole strategy of the game, uh, winning the toss and us not taking the ball. You, you, that's rare. But when you're playing the academy and, and you know what they're going to do, to me, from a mental standpoint, it's really important to have an opportunity to score the first drive of the second half. And I know it looks bad. Why do you do it? Get out in front, all that kind of stuff. I've played these guys since the, since the late 70s. Okay, And uh, the head coach at Navy was a teammate of mine for Kenny Niamatololo forever. So I, I understand him. Uh, Munkin started at the University of Hawaii with his first job. I understand this offense. I understand what they do very well. So even though analytically it may not make any sense, uh, giving them the ball in the first quarter and you having the ball in the third quarter, to me, is the best way to play them. We'll go in front to Sydney and then Emily after that. Coach, a lot more just you know connection tonight between Schrader, Schrader and the wide receivers. How can you speak specifically to how well Alfred played tonight? You know, Alfred is a captain, and he has a C on his chest, and that doesn't come easy. That means he has not only the faith and the support of the team, but uh, also the coaches as well. And uh, I was excited for him. It was a breakout game for, our, you know, we used to call him Bambi. Now we call him Moose since he's from Canada. But uh, you know the difference between a deer and a moose, right? Like you hit a deer. They tell you to hit a deer because you don't, they don't want you to veer off the road and get into trouble. Try hitting a moose and see what happens to your car and you inside of it. So. It's a big difference. He's a big guy, and we need him to play big. And we were excited about his performance today. Emily, then why right behind him? Army ran nine minutes off the clock, I think over nine minutes on that opening drive they had. I'm, I'm sure that's something you guys were kind of expecting, knowing how their offense operates. Just how do you, you game plan knowing that your, your defense is probably going to be on the field for extended periods like that when it hasn't in, in past weeks? First of all, nine minutes for the opening drive versus our defense. We were excited about that. I've seen 12 and 14 minutes in that thing. And we changed the way we practice. Normally, we're three and out in practices during the week. This week, last week, we were four and outs because we knew they were going to go forward for fourth downs. Talking to the team every practice about how this game was going to go, and it went, and it went exactly the way we thought it was going to go. And if it was going to be a close game, they were going to have the ball 40 to 44 minutes. If we found a way to break away, then maybe the reps would be different. But you, we, we went into this game understanding that our defense was going to play twice as many snaps as our offense as long as the score was close. And that's why it was important to get away a little bit so that those numbers and those possessions, uh, I mean, they're never going to balance out, but they came a little bit more to normal. Cut. Coach, you guys had a, you know, didn't have as many third down conversions in the first half as you probably would have liked. How did you kind of adjust to that in the second half and, and get going in those situations? Well, I think the bigger thing is we had a better feel for what they were doing. Uh, we had some miscues with communication uh, in the first half. It's amazing, you know, from a military standpoint, if you want to attack a, uh, a subject or an, an empire or a country, the first thing you want to do is take down their communications. Our communications were not smooth in the first half. But in the sec by going in at halftime and getting a bunch of stuff straightened out, uh, it got a lot better. And with that communications, we had more, uh, more success in the second half offensively and defensively. Tommy and then Mark in front. Coach, Le Coach LeQuinn Allen running the ball today. Slow burn there in the first half. Ends up finishing with 100 yard, over 100 yards. Is that a nice big check box for you with the O-line and creating that? Space. Absolutely. The Quinn is good enough to get 100 yards on the ground and 100 yards in the air. I mean, he could be a – he's got the ability to be a 200-yard performer. Now, he's, he's just that talented. People don't – he's really, really good. 
So, uh, yeah, I'm excited that he got 100, and uh, I don't know what he got in the air, but we need to get him more. Mark, and then Ashley back. Hey, Coach, even though you game planned for it and you expected Army to have that long possession uh, opening of the game, is it easy for an offense to get anxious or to realize we have to make good on almost all possessions? Again, everything you're saying is absolutely true, Mark, and I'm like, we preach to him. I did. This is what's going to happen, and you can't let it mentally wear you down. And, you know, in the second quarter, there was some guys that and I'm like, wait a minute now, we talked about this. Don't you, don't you go crazy on me. We talked about what's going to happen, and you can't let them physically, mentally attack you. And that's what that offense does. You're going to get your opportunities. You need to be positive on your opportunities. You need to get points on your opportunities. I think one of the turning points in the game is early in the second half where we went for it and we didn't get it. Because then they realized, oh, yeah, I'll go for it too on fourth down. We're going to play this game and we're going to balance the analytics of this thing. So uh, maybe it didn't matter, but doing that, that was something that they knew we could do as well. Coach, you're, hi. <laughs> you're down at halftime. Things didn't go how you wanted in the first half. What did you tell the guys in the locker room at halftime to kind of revitalize them for the second half? I wouldn't necessarily say things didn't go the way we wanted in the first half. We, obviously, we were trying to score in every possession. They're trying to stop us on every possession. I'd have loved for it to be a tie game or maybe a slightly ahead. But we were down by the, by the score that if we came out in the second half, we were going to break, get it even. Now, the big conversation was we needed to score on that drive in the third quarter. And when we did that, we switched it, the pressure back to them. If we do not score on that drive, then all the things that we're talking about and telling these young men how, it was, how the game was going to go down, there might have been some doubt in their mind. But because we did do that, it put them back in the right frame of mind that we're, this is happening exactly the way we want it to happen, and they've got a, a fantastic opportunity to win. Coach, we saw both Pena and Adams receiving punts today. Both chose not to go for uh, fair catches within the 10, 20 yard line. Going forward, is that going to be a tag team duo? Is one of those one more towards your, that you're leaning towards? Well, I'm not going to talk about that. Let's talk about them not going fair catch. I'm like, what's that all about? Hey, the guy's right in your face. Fair catch the doggone thing. Falling down on your nose to catch one. You, coach, I caught it. I know that's the reason why you're still there. <laughs> You better catch that thing. I think they, you know, I love the courage and all that kind of stuff, but uh, we need some common sense, too. There's, there's nothing wrong with fear catching a ball if somebody's telling you what mouthwash you're wearing. We're going to come right here on the corner and go to Emily after that. Yeah, Coach, as you know, Army ran the ball quite a lot in that first half. How did you and your coaching staff adjust as far as scheme and personnel to minimize the effects of their run game in the second half? We put one new thing in at halftime on defense. We put one new thing in at halftime, and then we put it back on the young men. The one thing you want to do as a coach is you don't want to take a game away. You don't want to out-scheme a game away from your guys. Uh, we, got, we, have more, we have a lot of talent. We have more talent. We need to make sure that those guys play up to a certain level, and you don't want to out-scheme them. You don't want them thinking you want them playing. It's a very – when you play these guys, you, people don't understand. I don't – a lot of coaches won't even schedule them. They literally – there are military. There are officers. They will not give up. They will fight, scratch, and claw every snap. And most officials love them so much that they let them get away with stuff. <laughs> I love them. I love them. You know, can you just talk through that, that last offensive drive you guys had before halftime? You're obviously talking a lot about the third quarter and how you guys knew you needed to score going into to that quarter. But I'm curious about that last drive and how much you were itching for a touchdown there versus <laughs> Big time. If, if, we get a, if we get a touchdown in the last drive and we get the ball in the third quarter, this game could have looked totally different. So itching is exactly right. Uh, the young man made a nice play and got the interception, turned it all around. Thank goodness the clock went double zero during the play. Even to get a field goal, Emily, in that situation would have been a positive. That was, that was positive us, and they're on the other side going, oh, we can't let them get a score right here. So uh, uh, they got the turnover, which brought us back once again. 
we're behind, but the way we looked at it is we're going to be dead even after the first drive in the third quarter. Was there a reason you didn't call timeout after Damian's first catch there? I think it would have set the clock at like 15 seconds. The clock was at 15 seconds on the dead clock. That's exactly what it was. You know how many plays do you get in 15 seconds? I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm going to give you the answer. Absolutely correct. So whether we call the timeout, timeout or not, which I believe I had two or three left, it, it just didn't matter. We knew what plays we wanted to run. We didn't want to call a timeout and let the secondary and the defensive army go back and talk to their coaches to remind them what to do. And that's why we came back. We were in good shape. A few more for Coach. We'll start with Mari, then go to Dan. Uh, first one, I'm, I'm going to steal something from Emily. Uh, Isaiah Jones not playing today. A uh, reason why that one. And, and second fold uh, about the secondary uh, and how they played today. Uh, Isaiah will be down for a while. And I have no dates on that. And then the, I thought the secondary, the starting secondary played really well. Now we had a, a hiccup there in the second half when we were start putting some other guys in that kind of really put some soap opera drama into the end of the game. But I thought for the most part, the secondary played extremely well. Last two for Coach, we'll start with Dan. Coach, when you reflect on the non-conference play and, and being 4-0 and as you step into the ACC, when you bundle it all up together, just what you've seen from this team and the resolve of your team, guys that have stepped up when they've needed to as well. I think the key part, DT, is exactly what you said on the step up part. I mean, we've got guys going down, and it's what happens in football. And it's the conversation's too long for me to give you all the answers up here and behind this microphone. But the key thing is, it's the next man up attitude, and and your your offense and your defense is 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 varying. It's changing based off of personnel, and it needs to. You know, like we're going to do what we always do. You can't do that. Some guys are different than other guys. There's a reason why some guys go to the NFL and some guys use their college degrees to make a lot of money. And you have to understand that, that you want to always stress your best players. Make your best players have stress. Don't make your players that are not the best have the stress in the offense or the stress on the defense. So as those players change, the rankings of 1 through 11 on offense, 1 through 11 on defense, 1 through 11 on the kicking game changes, you need to be able to change the stress meters on who is we're asking to do so much more and who we're just asking them to do their job. Dino, what did Trevor, Trevor Pena bring to your team leading up to today? And then what did he do on the field today that that brought into your locker room. You know, Trevor is an is an explosive player. He's one of those guys that go out there and you go, wow, he's he's really small. And then all he does is do big things. So uh, we're all excited about him coming back out. We were excited about him being a part of it. And I really believe it kind of gives us an uplift when we see him back there in the kicking game and we see him running routes and doing things on offense. He's one of our favorite guys. Thank you very much.